strategy and future plans. Archie is sitting down with world-renowned opera star Anna Netrebko. Anna, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello. I want to start off by saying congratulations on the extremely successful opening of the Metropolitan Opera season as the prima of uh, Anna Bolena. Now, uh, it's been a decade since your debut on this stage. How does it feel to be back in such a dramatic role in one of the most famous stages uh, in the world? I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about music and about what I have to perform. But about a decade or two decades behind, it's past. It's gone. <laughs> Today it's a different time, it's a different role. You've studied uh, Anna Boleyn's character, historic character, in detail, as far as I know, before taking on this role. What was it really that attracted you to her? Well, she was a strong woman, she was an attractive woman. I guess it was something about her which attracts the people, which make somebody change the religion, get divorced. Uh, I think uh, she was an incredible woman, that's why I really like her, besides, of course, uh, but it's uh, one of the most beautiful ever written opera. She's clearly also a very dramatic and passionate woman. How, how do you gather energy, really, to go out on stage and perform with such vigor? Well, this is something which you have or you don't have. Passion, energy. Some people have it, some don't. And uh, you've certainly won over the hearts of millions of people all over the world. Uh, do you still sometimes get nervous before walking out on stage or...? I am getting nervous because uh, each performance, it's a live performance. Uh, we're singing without the microphones and uh, anything can happen. The, usually the roles are quite tough and you have to be able to, to go through the whole evening uh, in a quite good level. Uh, that's why uh, I think to, to go on the stage in front of the thousands of people, sometimes it's millions. If it's a live transmission, it's even more scarier. Yeah, we get nervous. That's normal. And you have uh, uh, the leading cast in this, uh, in this opera are all Russians, which is certainly a major source of pride for Russians back at home. And uh, is it for you? Actually, uh, yeah, they have three Russians in the opening night at the Met in, in Italian opera. It's... Uh, yeah, it's almost never happened. I don't know how did that, that happen. I think uh, it's, a, it's a great. It means what uh, Russian singers are really going for that. It's, it's wonderful. Do you think the West's curiosity towards the Russian soul is growing because of uh, you know, Russia's growing cultural influence uh, throughout the world? Probably right, of course. And uh, what uh, now uh, Russian artists able to to go outside of Russia and study and um, sing in the different stages, get experience with the different musicians. I think it's a great thing for us, not only for the singers, but, but for musicians as well. I think that's why the, the level of the performing art in Russia, it's really growing very, very high. Uh, traditionally, opera is really seen as an elite art that's appreciated by a more knowledgeable and mature audience. Uh, we, you had, during the performance, two huge screens in New York where thousands of people gathered to watch, uh, including a very large young generation. Uh, do you think this means that, really, the younger generations throughout the world is beginning to appreciate opera more these days? It would be wonderful if it's so, but I do think what lots of young people really interested at opera. This is definitely so in Europe. I think here it's as well. And it's great because uh, opera, if we, even if it's the intelligent and uh, let's say old fashioned art, it has something very truthful. And this is amazing. Something very, very passionate, which is extremely modern. And uh, we know that in October, uh, Al uh, Anna Bolena is going to be uh, shown in movie theaters all over the world, where millions more people will get the opportunity to really uh, experience this. Uh, do you think that's also uh, a new trend, really, in the 21st century that's going to attract a much wider audience? I think it's a great thing uh, about this high definition. And uh, great would it do so. It's very difficult to do, very difficult to organize. But uh, I think with the um, possibilities now, with um, all the 12 cameras around, with the amazing sound, it really can bring opera to the wider audience in a quite good level. Even if I think what it's not easy to put opera on the screen. 
do you think it gets in the way of really sending the message across as strongly as to a real life audience? I think that the opera is not for close up. I think it has to be performed in the opera theaters. But, but there is a, some performance which has a, an, an emotional moments which only camera and big screen can, can capture. And this is these moments when you really can fall in love with opera because they are amazing, they're very truthful. Now you certainly have uh, a very wide range of roles that you perform. Is there one maybe that's still your dream that kind of you keep to yourself that you still wish to achieve that you think about in the, in the years to come? I'm always trying to learn something new, otherwise the life gets boring. <laughs> No, of course, there is uh, lots of uh, new coming, interesting roles. And um, the, the one is going to be, in a few years here, my debut in uh, Evgeny Onegin, Russian. And this I'm actually looking forward to. This is a beautiful role, very extremely famous opera, and uh, this will take a lot of work and preparation for me. Now, you're the first opera singer ever to be put on uh, Time Magazine's Most Influential People list. You're called uh, the genius of the 21st century. This media frenzy surrounding your personality, do you feel, does it make you feel more responsible or do you feel like sometimes it gets in the way of you concentrating on your art? No, it's not hmm, getting away my concentration. Uh, if it makes me feel more responsible, uh, yes. But even even without this um, uh, beautiful things in press which happening, thank you very much. Even without that, I'm, I'm extremely concentrating artist, just for me, for myself, because I like to do what I do in the best way. You've said in previous interviews that uh, some uh, opera singers really ruin their careers for uh, getting, letting some superstitions get into their head. Can you give us sort of a sneak peek into the backstage scene? What, what are some of those? I, I was curious. Well, the, the human brain is a very complicated thing. And uh, <laughs> the brain of the opera singer, it's... I know really what lots of singers screw their the career just because something get clicked there and went wrong. I mean, I think you, you have to be able to abstract the rest of the world from what you have to do at this exact moment and be kind of like uh, uh, complexes free during your performance. And for that, you have to be quite strong. And you also, you were born in Krasnodar, and Sochi is hosting the Olympic Games in 2014. Are we, should we expect to see you there? Yes, I am. I'm going to be there. I don't know if I will be watching the sports, probably only on TV, but I'm going to be there singing at the <clears throat> opening and closing ceremony. I'm definitely going to appear there. Which of the stages really do you prefer? Is it, do you prefer to go back home, or maybe is it something else? I think the wonderful thing about our profession is that we're always changing the places and the stages. And this is great. I mean, you spent two months in one city, you did a great performances, and after that you say, okay, it's great, that's enough. It's time to leave and to go somewhere else. And it doesn't matter which city, which country it is, the stage is a stage. I'm, I'm always performing with the same intensity, with the same power, and, uh, and I love, love to do so. Where do you find the energy? Because everybody obviously always talks about you're such a beautiful woman, you have a family, you have this incredible career. People wonder, how do you do it? I don't know. I just, uh, I know what I have to do this. I, there is now the time when I really have to work. There will be the time when I will be resting. Can you imagine your life as anything else but an opera star? I am the person who will never just sit and wait of something. I, I will find what to do. I'm very person of action. Now, I wanted to ask you, uh, I've read that you are, one of your hobbies is watching movies and you've had appearances in film. Do you maybe have plans to uh, take your career further, go to Hollywood, take it back and take it to the big screen? I don't like it. I like to watch movies, but uh, I would never switch my career. I love to do what, I, what I'm doing. But as something extra, you don't think you would do maybe a role in a movie? To play in a movie, just to play, no. If it will be a role about something, uh, what I'm doing about opera, yes, probably, why not? 
You're the honorary director of the Russian uh, Children's Welfare Society and a global ambassador for an Austrian-based international uh, children's charity. What brings you to this cause, really? Why, why children's rights? We, of course, understand that it's important, but uh, why specifically this cause? And what do you think really are the most important steps for the international community to be taking in supporting children's causes? To be a public person and to have a lot of opportunity to really use it in the good purposes, it's an important thing. And that's I understand quite soon. And that's why um, I have a lots of charity projects. We, me and my husband, we opened a foundation in Europe. And we did, and we're going to do a lots of wonderful projects. I think it's extremely important. Thank you very much for your time with us today. <laughs>